Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So good to have you here. We are here today to take a look at one of the students from my coaching cohort and the ServiceNow project. She did all on her own. It's her capstone project. I'd like to introduce everybody to Kathy Delbridge. Kathy, welcome to the show. Hey Rob, thanks for having me here. Appreciate it. In my coaching cohorts, I always ask my students to come up with their own capstone just so that they can get the practice taking things from complete abstraction into reality. And Kathy's got a great, amazing use case, real world implications, and also deals with money, which is one of my favorite topics. And so Kathy, what have you got for us today? Well, Rob, I love money too. So yeah, this is going to be a good one. Rob, I have been in the mortgage industry now for 23 plus years, and I've been in roles ranging from loan processor to loan officer to operations manager. So for my capstone, I want to build something that make doing what I do right now a whole heck of a lot less stressful and a lot more efficient. Why because, is it stressful and inefficient? Well, because believe it or not, there's still so much that we still do manually, whether we're managing tasks via email or we're keeping up with our pipeline via an Excel spreadsheet. And because of all that, it can be extraordinarily hard to find out just how complete a loan file is at any given time. And when we say the tasks on a loan file, yeah. are we talking like two or three tasks? How many tasks are we talking about? Oh, hell no. We're talking about hundreds of tasks on a loan. It's it's a lot. On a loan. Yeah. On, on a, a loan. loan. On a one one loan. You're talking yeah. about hundreds of tasks per loan and how many loans are you processing at any given time? A good loan officer is going to close between 10 to 20 loans a month. Your extraordinarily loan officers are going to close 30 to 50 loans a month. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tasks per month, per loan. That is All correct. right, cool. That's correct. Absolutely. <laughs> that sounds crazy. I can't wait to see it. Because of that visibility problem, we find ourselves a lot of times working in reactive mode just to get along to the closing table on time. And we want to be proactive, not reactive. So the core of my app is a task extension for loan, and it's going to track a lot for us. It's going to track our property types, and it's going to track our loan types, and each of those are going to govern how the loan is going to be processed, and it's going to also track all of our individual loan contributors, because we've got loan processors, loan officers, underwriters, and many, many more, and each of those are going to come in to play at various states. And I'll give you a brief overview of the states. We've got a loan that's going to go from new, then it's going to progress to pre-approval, and then we're going to pre progress to an under contract state. Then we're going to go to end processing. Our processor is going to take it and put it in underwriting. And then after the file's gone through underwriting and the underwriter's done their job, we're going to have a file that's conditionally approved. And we might have our, our next date that we get to, you're going to see is cleared to close. Everybody loves to get a loan that's cleared to close. And then we've got that closing package that's going to get delivered to the closing attorney's office so all the documents can be signed. And the last state that we want to get to is the closed state. Closed state means that our buyers, they've closed on their home. They got keys in hand. Our real estate agents are going to get their commission checks and the loan officer and the mortgage company are going to get paid. So those are the different states that we're going to be tracking. And then, of course, we're going to be tracking those hundreds and hundreds of tasks. We're going to be tracking all the loan documents that we have to gather for each loan. And then, of course, we're going to be tracking all those conditions that have to be met and cleared so we can get those loans cleared into the closing table. And every single thing, we're going to automate all of that via flow. And this is a brand new loan. And as you're going to see on this loan record, we're going to be, we're going to have our loan number. Obviously, we want to track our borrower's first and last name. We need to track the loan purpose, the loan type, and our property type. And of course, we do care about our loan amount. And we've got our state here. State is read only because states are managed via our flow. And a loan is not going to progress to the next date of the loan until all the required tasks have been completed. And then if you look down here at the bottom, you can see just by creating this new loan, we automatically know we've got one task that our loan officer has to complete, and that's full credit. But if we look here at the documents on loan related list, you can see automatically we've got 19 documents that we're going to have to gather on this loan no matter what. So we've used Flow to intelligently tell us here are the documents we're going to have to have on this loan and we can track them right here on this related list. Makes our life a lot more simple. And do each of those documents have their own life cycle? I see a status there. 
Right now, everything is in an expected status. We really want status to get to received status. When it's received, we're going to mark it as being received. Once everything is in the received status, does that progress the workflow? It's actually the task that are going to progress the workflow to the next state. So let's go to an in underwriting file. And I believe this is the one I want to show you. Yep, my Fisher loan. As you can see here on the Fisher loan, you can notice we got two more fields that we added here. We added our loan processor and our underwriter field. We didn't need these when it was just a new loan, but now we want to have these fields here. And on the related list on the new loan, we had 19 documents there, if you recall. And of mm -hmm. course, we didn't have any conditions. The reason you've got less documents on loan is I created a default filter because as a loan officer, what I really care about is I want to know which ones have not yet been received. I don't want to have to muddy my eyes with all the data so I can come right here and I can tell, okay, there's eight documents. We still got to get on this loan. And then for our loan conditions, once this loan reached a state of an underwriting, our underwriting flow automatically added all these conditions. And it's going to be the underwriter's job to go in here and mark these either as cleared or you at least want to be weighed. Where our goal is we have nothing in an added status anymore. It's all been cleared. This... This is part of what I love about this app because IT doesn't even have anything close to this where people's lives are riding on the line here. It's the difference between closing and getting your house or not closing and getting your house. You have 55 things that are absolutely pivotal to getting this thing done and you're managing it in email today. And now yeah. here it is all rolled up to the loan. Fantastic. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Awesome. And the next state I'll show you is conditionally approved. We're going to look at this boot loan. There we go. I think her name's Betty Boot. Yep. Now we know we're going to have a loan closure coming here at some point. So we added that field. But if you go down here, you can see now the numbers have changed even less. Now we've only got four documents that we need to gather. Mm -hmm. And then loan conditions. Now we only got three. Remember, we had 55 when a loan first went to underwriting. So now I can quickly come here and go, okay, well, these are the conditions that I need to meet on this loan. So I love it because I'm not pulling my hair out and swiveling back and forth, going from different apps and different screens. It's all right here for me. We've seen how the different states have radically changed the amount of stuff that you need via documents on loan and loan conditions. Can you just give us a quick peek at the flow? Absolutely. This is a flow for a new loan and about roughly right now, I think nine to 10 different flows that I've built just to manage all the different states of the loan. But this was a flow for a new loan and obviously state bridge is new. It's going to build that document on loan record. It's going to pull in all the documents that we know we're going to need for this file. And you can see that each of these are going to have a weight because obviously a, pre a loan officer can't send a pre-approval to a borrower until they've pulled credit. They review right. the income documents, all that. And then once that task is completed, then this loan is going to automatically advance to the state of pre-approval. And okay? then that launches the next that flow launches, that governs that state onward. Yep, yep. Launches the next flow for the pre-approval state. What was the hardest thing for you to wrap your head around when you were building these flows for the first time? One of the hardest ones is I'll show you my conditionally approved process flow because a lot of times in our industry, we'll send conditions back to the underwriter for the underwriter to review them. We, we fulfill them. We send them back here. She clears them. But then a lot of times, you know, once those get cleared, then the file comes back to us and we've got more conditions that we need to meet and we need to be able to have those tasks to work those conditions. So getting this for each to work and to loop around, this was probably one of the ones that was the most, I say a little bit somewhat difficult for me, but that, but also the most fun because I love to see how this one worked. I love the, getting the notifications out to the loan officer and the processor, but this is probably one of the most challenging ones was to make sure that it waited for all of this. And as soon as the underwriter has marked that they've re fulfilled all the conditions, this flow is going to look at those conditions. And if we still have any conditions that are in an added status, it's going to send a notification out to our loan officer and our processor telling them that Hey, your borrower smart, this loan is now back from the underwriter and it's going to tell them that they awesome. reviewed it. And, you, and we got a link that's going to take them right here to the loan. And we're going to remind them to what their closing date is. So it just makes everything a lot more visible to everybody. So we've used yep. flow to govern how a loan is processed. Yep. And that makes your life easier as the individual on the team. But how does it make the business better? 
let me show you some dashboards that I created, which makes it much easier and by having much better visibility. So here we are, we're on Edward Lewis's dashboard. So I'm assuming I'm Edward Lewis, I'm the loan officer. It's gonna help me be able to see what's at risk, what needs my attention today so I can be more proactive throughout my day. And as a loan officer, I can tell I've got loans that are closing in the next five days that have conditions that are outstanding. So I know that these two loans are going to take my focus probably the first part of the day so I can get with my processor, get out, make sure those conditions are gathered. What, what else we're going to show this loan officer is telling them that you've got this loan here is closing in the next seven days. And this ICD it stands for Initial Close and Disclosure. It's a document that we have to send to a borrower within three business days of closing, but we can't send it unless we have certain components or documents gathered on the file. So this is telling that loan officer, you don't have all the necessary documents to get this to the borrower. So I want to focus on this because these documents all come from third parties. So we want to get on this right away. Also from a loan officer, I can forecast how I'm doing ahead. I've got $4.2 million worth of loans that are loan volume cleared to close. I've got 10 units closing within the next 30 days for my total loan volume of 11.15 million. In addition, I can see here where all my loans are in the status, but what's even better, remember how I talked about managing a lot of tasks via email? Mm -hmm. I don't have to do that anymore because every time I assign a task to my processor or anyone else on the file that's associated with it, I can track every single one of those tasks right here and I can see which tasks are still outstanding. So I don't have to keep trying to find it via my email. And also I can track the tasks that have been assigned to me as a loan officer. Mm -hmm. And obviously I've got three loans that are new. So I've got to pull some credit and get working on some tasks. So we pull back to the my pipeline just for a quick second yeah, and scroll to the very bottom. First uh -huh. of all, I, lo I love the whole like red is danger, green is good. That but is correct, I, mo yeah. The thing I love the most here, if I scroll all the way down, is if I could just get all these to the right state, that's how much money I'm going to get. That's, that's how right. much I'm going to get, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yep, absolutely. All right, what else you got? All right, so let's go impersonate our processor, Mrs. Erica Processor. And now we're on our processor dashboard. And this dashboard is going to be somewhat similar to the loan officer in the fact that it's going to let the processor know right away what's going to need their focus and their attention that day, automatically this processor can look and tell that they've got a loan that needs to be submitted to underwriting. They've got to make sure they work on this file, get it submitted to underwriting. They can look right here and see that the closing date is July the 16th. So they know they've got a little bit of time, but this will tell them you do have a new loan, you need to work on today. But what's even better, we come down here, they can tell that here are the loans that have open conditions and these loans are all closing within the next seven days. So if I'm the processor looking at this dashboard, I'm going to likely work on these first and I can sort them by closing date. So I'm going to make sure I work them in the order of the closing date. I'm going to jump into every one of these files, see the conditions that are outstanding, get to working on those. They can quickly take a look and see it, all the loans that they do have in processing that are assigned to them. But what I also like is if there is a task that's been deemed a P1 task, they can come right here and see what P1 task they got to work on. And they can also come over here and they can look at all of their open tasks as well. So this processor has got nine tasks they've got to work on right now. So they got to get mm -hmm. busy. Let me show you the branch manager dashboard. It's pretty much rolled everything up into one nice little package for them because number one, they can forecast their revenue but they can see what revenue is at risk. And they can look right here and they can tell, we've got 3.95 loans equaling loan volume of almost $4 million, but they're gonna, but it's gonna be bringing in almost $25,000 worth of branch revenue. So as, as a branch manager, you can damn well know that I'm gonna get with the underwriting team and the processors working these loans to make sure we get all of these loan conditions met because we want to get these loans closed on time and we don't want to delay our income coming in. Another visibility issue is, remember how we talked about those loans that were missing those initial close and disclosure components? We've got $17 million worth of revenue on loans that are supposed to close in the next seven days. Let's get busy on these. Let's get those documents in so we can close these loans on time. And then what's even better is of that revenue that we can forecast, we can tell that we've got almost $15 million worth of loans supposed to close in the next 30 days. That's going to bring us in close to $90,000. I like this because if I'm the branch manager and if I know my monthly salary and 
that I got to pay my team is a hundred grand. I'm like, okay, we need to bring this up because I need to get more revenue in. That's very helpful for me. And these last two, take a look at our income shown by state of the loan. So they can take a look at this and tell, luckily enough of our income coming in, most of it is either conditionally approved or cleared to close. So we only got just a little bit that's in underwriting or in processing. So that makes me happy that we're moving forward. And then this just shows our loan volume. So we can take a look at the loan volume. And if for some reason they wanted to look at it by loan underwriter, they can take a look here. And luckily enough, we can tell that our actual income is evenly weighted between the two. And I believe we've got this one over here sorted by just loan officer. So if I want to look at it by loan officer, Edward Lewis closing almost 78% of the loan volume for this branch. So Edward Lewis is kicking ass. He's doing a great job. This is very helpful for that branch manager. They can forecast the revenue, see what's at risk and make good predictions. And they can just zoom right into all the items that are missing. All right, folks. Uh, what I love about this solution is that it isn't super fancy uh, on the interface, but it is very profound. It helps all people in Kathy's line of business. Every role in the business of getting the loan closed is accounted for. It brings visibility to the stuff that was previously invisible, brings automation to stuff that was previously manually done. And most importantly, it shows the impact of the bottom line. With one solution that took Kathy just a couple weeks to build, all of a sudden, the whole business can run on this app. As you can see, Kathy Delbridge can figure out the outcomes of her stakeholders. Using herself as an example, she built flows and structures to govern the process, and she tied it all back to the business outcomes by providing the dashboards that showed the movement against the bottom line and what you can do to push that movement faster. If you would like to hire Kathy as your ServiceNow uh, admin developer consigliere, she is available. You can reach out to her and I. Links are going to be in the description below. Kathy, any last words? I definitely learned a few things during this um, build. Number one, be careful of scope creep because I do know so much about this industry. There is a lot that I wanted to build. And if, if you want to ask me anything else I probably would have done differently, I probably would have made my flows a little more scalable and I would have leveraged subflow more to handle a little more differentiation between the loan type and loan purpose because different loan types and different property types are going to require different documentation and conditions to be met. I could have maybe just had one governing flow and multiple subflows, and that would have made me leverage that a little bit better as well. There you go. You got somebody with tons of life experience. She gets flow. She can take very complex things. She can embed them in flow, and you can have that kind of resource day one by hiring Kathy. All right, Kathy, thanks so much for coming, and thank you all for watching. Thank you, Rob.